I want to show you one of my favorite puzzles. And um, the reason why this is one of my favorite puzzles is because of a lot of the great math that comes out of it. So this is a very simple puzzle. I'm just going to show you. So what I do is I start by just drawing three circles. It's called the Towers of Hanoi. So I'm going to start by drawing three circles. Okay. And then I'm going to stack my four coins. Nice little stack with the biggest one on the bottom. In the one circle. And the job is to get the stack of coins from this circle to this circle. Okay. Well, obviously, there needs to be a few constraints on this. Uh, we need to have a couple of rules, or else, obviously, this is far too easy. Rule number one is I can only move one coin at a time. Rule number two is I can never put a coin, a bigger coin, on top of a smaller coin so that it covers it like that. So that can't go there. That would have to go there. Okay? And the job is to get this stack of coins from this first circle over to the third circle. Okay, well, let's see how we do. And I'm gonna count my moves as I do this. So, one, two, uh, let's see here, three, four, I'm gonna go with five, six, seven, eight, Hmm, let me think here. How about this one? Nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. There we go. 15 moves. Well, that seemed easy enough, not much of a puzzle. Where's the math in all of this? Well, a couple of questions. Question number one. Done that quicker than that. It took me 15 moves. Is it possible to do it in fewer moves? I mean, one thing I could try is just to do it again. And let's say it took me 15 moves again. Or let's say it took me longer than 15 moves. And let's say I did that a hundred times. Is that telling me that it's impossible to do it quicker? And the answer to that question is no. So that's no way to proceed. And I have a related question. How many moves would it take me then? If I added a coin, whoops, and did it in five, five moves, how many moves is that going to take? Or is it even possible? I don't know. So let's talk about that. Let's take this one away. Well, we're going to need to sort of be a little systematic about this. And one thing that mathematicians like to do when they're faced with a problem that seems a little bit too complicated and they're having a little bit of trouble wrapping their heads about how they're going to approach it is to turn it into a simpler problem. What about one coin? How many moves is that going to take? That's pretty easy. One. All right. So let's keep track of this. So over here on the side, go make a little table. And I use in the lowercase n to represent the number, of, the number of coins in the stack, and an uppercase m to represent the number of moves it took me. So one coin, one move. Easy enough. Reset the puzzle, step it up to two coins. Okay, so let me see here. Um, I want to end up with a big coin over here, so I better put this coin there, so that's one move. Then I can put the big coin there, and then I can put the smaller coin there. So two coins, three moves. All right. Well, moving in the right direction. I'm not sure if I see anything yet. Maybe you do, but I'm going to do another one here. So this is going to be a stack of three coins. How many moves? Okay. Well, let's see. Well, wait a second. Now, now, now I'm starting to think. I'm starting to see some things. I'm starting to think about some things. I can't move this bottom coin until I've moved the two top coins. And if I want to move the bottom coin over to the third circle, I need to take these two coins. I know this is cheating right now. This isn't counting as solving it. But I need to end up in this position with these two coins in the middle circle. And then I can move this over to here 
and then I can move the number of two coins over. So the, let's, let's break this into parts. So part one of this is to take two coins and move them to that middle circle. How many moves is that going to take? Wait a minute, that, that, that should be pretty easy, right? Because I already know how many moves it takes to move. You know, I already did this puzzle. I know it takes two moves to move from here to here. Well, it, it's not going to take, it doesn't matter what circle, it's going to take, this, or not, sorry. I know it takes three moves to move from there to there. Moving to the middle circle is going to be exactly the same deal. So I know that it's going to take three moves, because that was the number of uh, moves it took me to do uh, two, two coins. It's going to take me three moves to move that one to there. So from here to here, it's going to take three moves. And then from here to here is going to take one move. So I've got to add that on, plus one. And then I've got to move the two coins from there to there. So that's going to be plus a three. So this should be three plus one, four plus three more. That's seven. Oh, let me be consistent in my color use here. That should be seven. So seven coins, or three coins, should take me seven moves. Let's see if I can do this in seven moves. So my first objective is to move the two coins into the middle circle, which means I've got to put the first coin over here, move that coin there. That's move number two. There's move number three. Move number four. Then move number five, move number six, move number seven. Oh, I'm on to something here. So seven moves to do that. And I know it's not going to, it's no way to do that in fewer moves. No way, because no matter how you shake it, you have to move that stack of two to there before you can ever move that, and that will take three moves minimum. That's one move, and then three moves again. There's no shorter way to do it. I'm going to analyze this a little bit further and say to myself, well, where did this three came from? Well, it was the number of moves it took to move a stack of two. So I'm going to use M with a little subscript two to indicate move two. Then there's that plus one, and then this is a move two. Well, if I continue that same pattern, if I want to find out how much to do a stack of four coins, it should mean, let me put the fourth coin back on there, that I have to first move the stack of three to the middle circle. So that's however many M3 moves move for a three coin stack. And then plus one, plus a one. And then another, I gotta move that stack of three again. I know to move a stack of three takes seven moves. And that takes seven moves. So seven plus one plus seven, that's 15. And if you recall, that's how many moves it took me to, uh, and at the actual beginning of the video, it took me 15 moves to do it. So that turned out to be the most efficient way to do it. That did turn out to be the quickest way. Well, the next part of my question was, what if I added on a fifth coin? Okay, what about four or five? Well, this is easy. I can go a little bit, I can just keep extending this pattern, right? It's M5, I'll write it down here below. M5 is going to equal M4 plus one plus M4. Because I gotta move that stack of four, then move the bottom coin, and then move the stack of four again. Well, I can simplify this a little bit. This is two times M4 plus a one. It's a little bit of a simpler formula. That's what the M5 is going to be. So M4 was 15. Let's do that here. Two times 15 plus one, 30. So this has got to take me 30 moves. Minimum. All right, let's see if I can do it. Let's see if I can do this in the minimum number of moves. Now, a little bit of a strategy, a little bit of a tactic that I picked up in doing this. When I went to move the one coin, it was just simply moving it to that. I moved it, I'm gonna call this circle my target circle, T for target. I'm gonna call this circle my spare circle, S for spare. So when it was one, I just went straight to the target. When it was two, I took that top coin and put it in my spare circle so that I could move the bottom coin to the target. When it was three, 
I had to go back to moving the top coin to the target so I could move my second coin to the spare so that I can ultimately move the bottom coin to the target. It's all about getting a bottom coin to the target in order to do this quickly. Notice that when it was one coin you went, you put the top coin and went to the target. When it was two coins you put the top coin in the spare. When it was three coins you put the top coin in the target. Four coins, you can look back in the video, rewind it, and you'll find out that I put the top coin into the spare. So for five coins, I should be putting the top coin on target. It alternates back and forth. Odd number of coins, go straight for the target. Even number of coins, go for the spare. I'll leave it for you to, uh, to convince yourself of the truth of that statement. That's an exercise for the reader, let's put it that way. So this has got to go to the target. So that is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm moving a stack of three, so I need to go to the target, which is now this one, right? I want to get the stack on there. So that's, what was that? Nine, I better not lose count. <laughs> 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 15 to move the stack of four, sound familiar? Plus one more, 16. Now I gotta move 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, better not mess up now. 29, 30, 31. And if my arithmetic were a smidge better, <laughs> of course, 2 times 15 is, plus 1 is 31. I didn't add the 1. What a dope. So, minus 1 for bad arithmetic, 31. <laughs> that is what I actually got. It's funny, I, was, I verify it when I actually do it. Can't do arithmetic. Okay, so 31. So I answered the question, yes, it is possible to do five coins. Um, and in fact, it takes 31 moves, and that's the minimum. And not only that, this pattern will continue. Six coins, seven coins, eight coins, nine coins. This will go on forever. So in fact, any stack of coins can be solved. Doesn't matter. So I've solved a lot in this little bit, just thinking about a little bit of math here. And I know for a fact that it'll work all the time. We can express this as a general formula. Let's write this in the middle here. Okay? If I want to take a stack of any number of coins and know how many moves it takes to move n coins, it's always going to be, if I look at my little formula, for instance here, m5, it's 2 times m4, which is 1 less than m5. So it's 2 times 1 less than the n, 1 less than n is n minus 1 plus 1. So I got myself a little bit of a formula here that I can use to calculate uh, any number that I want. It isn't a perfect formula, though. Let's say I was a crazy person. And let's say I wanted to know how many moves was it going to take me to do a Tower of Hanoi that was 50 coins tall. I don't know, I'm a masochist or something like that. And I wanted to figure out how many moves that would make. Well, in order to do 50 moves, where n's of 50, I need to know n minus 1, 50 minus 1, which is 49. So I need to know how many moves it takes to move a 49 coin stack. But to know a 49 coin stack, I need to know the 48 coin stack. And then to move a 48 coin stack, I need to know the number of moves for a 47 coin stack. All the way down to 1. And by the way, I probably should have written on here because the formula by itself actually doesn't work unless you know that the first one is actually 1. M1 was 1. Right, that's right there. So to calculate the number of moves to do a 50 coin Tower of Hanoi, I need to just go through this pattern up to 50. That doesn't seem very satisfying. I wonder if there's some sort of a way that I could have gotten an answer a little quicker than that. Well, I'm going to rewrite the table over here. And some of you might be noticing a slightly different pattern. One, one, 
2, 3, 3 7 it's the same numbers, 4, 15, 5, 31. And if you're having a little bit of trouble seeing the pattern, I'm going to write some other numbers to the side of it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to write the numbers 2 to the n. Okay, 2 to the 1 is 2, 2 to the 2 is 4, 2 to the 3 is 8. Notice all I'm doing is multiplying the previous number by 2. 2 to the 4 is 16, 2 to the 5 is 32. I'm not sure if people notice that or not, but I'm hoping people are starting to notice right now that if I take that and subtract 1, that gets me the number of moves. So that's an alternate formula. I'm going to write it underneath here. Mn seems to also equal 2 to the n minus a 1. So for okay, seems to be working right here. Let's see if it works for the next one. Let's do number 6. Number 6, according to the pattern, of doubling it and adding 1. If I take 31 multiplied by 2, that's 62 plus 1 is 63. But it's also 64, which is 2 to the 6, minus 1. So this formula seems to be working. But will it work all the time? Do I know for a fact that this second formula will work? every single time. I mean, I've tested it for six. You might think it works six times. What if I did a ten times? What if I did a hundred times? What if I got a computer and got it to do a million times? Is that a proof that it will work all the time? And in mathematics, the answer to that question is no. In order to prove that it'll work all the time, you need to prove it for every single whole number in existence, all the way up to infinity. No computer program can do that. No matter how powerful, can't get anywhere close to infinity. In fact, if you think about it, no matter how powerful a computer is, it's never going to get any closer than I just did to getting towards infinity. So mathematically, that's no good. Somehow we have to find a link. A link between these two statements. This statement here that I boxed together, I know is true for a fact. Guaranteed, that's true. We put an argument together, argument's 100% convincing, that works all the time. Is there some way to connect these two together, to take this truth and connect it to the second one? Our conjecture, is it possible to, to connect the two together? That's going to have to be the topic for the next video.